Over the years, the textile and garment industry have grown hand in hand by leaps and bounds. Clothing designers are sending out more and more styles to meet public demands. These are the results of grueling hard work, discipline, and determination from the garment industry. It also generates the age-old question of what should I wear today? With this comes a high demand for textiles in many forms. The overall feel from the textile market is one that will never die as long as clothes are needed. Oh, hello, and welcome to another edition of Bazaar. This time, we are going to explore the clothing and textile industry. This exciting sector is driven by the fast-changing taste of its customers. It has also invented and reinvented itself several times over the years. We wanted to see just how this booming industry is doing in national and international markets. So, let's suit ourselves up for today's Bazaar. In order to become more familiar with the market, we visited the clothing manufacturing company of Benny's. It was first established in 2010, and its clothing are tailored to women for casual wear. As the beginning, we started with a lot of clothing. Then we started with a lot of clothing. But thank God, God really helped us. And with the help of the team, کارمندامون تولید و اینا بله و بحران های خیلی بزرگی رو پشت سر گذاشتیم ولی الان خوب خدا شد یه تولید خوب هستیم محفظ This company has over a hundred styles of clothing in its product portfolio which have been created by Iranian designers among its clothing items, one will find the latest styles of trousers, dresses, t-shirts, sweatshirts, and so much more. Also, this company has a whole line of maternity clothing for expecting mothers. محصولات این مجموعه بیشتر لباسایی هست که خانم ها در منزل استفاده می کنند و یا در مجالس تاپ مانتو شلوار، شلوارک و این محصول ها یه باید دیگه هم هست در این مجموعه که کار فروش آنلاین رو انجام میده A piece of clothing starts from the fabric that is cut into patterns which are later machine sewn together There are several workshops housed in the production facilities The company uses special computer software to create its patterns They are later fed to machines that cut sections of the pattern out of stacked layers of fabric this can also be done by hand. بعد از ورود پارچه به مجموعه کار از واحد طراحی شروع میشه. واحد طراحی بنا به نیاز بازار و سفارشاتی که از فروشگاهامون دریافت میکنه یه سری الگوها و طرح رو ارائه میده که بعد از تایید نهایی این طرح ها کار به واحد برش سپرده میشه. بعد از انجام کار برش و تهیه قطعات لباس ها محصولات به واحد گلدوزی و چاپ سپرده میشه که در اونجا ترهایی که تایید شده چاپ هایی که تایید شده روی محصولات انجام میشه سپس وارد سالن دوخت میشه در اینجا بسته به اولویتی که به سالن دوخت میدن این محصولات به ترتیب وارد سالن دوخت میشه Depending on the intended clothes, some of these cut fabrics are sent to the printing workshop. There, patterns are placed on the clothes using screen printing mechanisms by hand. Certain floral patterns are also sewn onto the clothing using embroidery machines. Each process is meticulously carried out in order to maintain quality of the final products and to reduce waste. <laughs> از زمانی که پارچه وارد میشه و مواد اولیه وارد میشه تا زمانی که به صورت کالا و بسته بندی از مجموعه خارج میشه ادامه داره سعی میکنیم که تولیداتمون 
با مواد اولیه کاملا تولید داخلی باشه و پارچه ها به صورت کاملا وکیوم شده و کابه شده داخل انبار نگهداری میشه کنترلمون تو قسمت الگو و طراحی خیلی زیاد نظارت زیادی تو این قسمت انجام میدیم برای اینکه از حساسیت خیلی زیادی برخورداره و سعی میکنیم که کمتری میزان خطر رو توی این قسمت داشته باشیم بخش بعدی ما بخش دوخت هستش که سعی میکنیم از پرسنل با تسلط و مهارت کافی توی این قسمت استفاده کنیم و همونطور که مشاهده کردید سعی میکنیم محیط کاریمون کاملا مساعد و مناسب حال پرسنلمون باشه از نور و تهویه کاملا مناسب برخوردار باشه و سعی میکنیم کاملا در قالب استاندارد ها کار کنیم استاندارد های تایید شده کار کنیم As you probably know, machines are very useful tools in mass production industries. Much of the equipment needed for mass production of clothing is still imported with the exception of a few machines. These items are mostly imported from China and India. Previously, equipment was being brought in from Germany and Italy, but after the reimposition of sanctions, those imports slowly faded. Sanctions can be disruptive, no doubt. The fabric cutouts are then sent to the sewing workshop where basic sewing is done with massive machines. These crude forms are then taken to another workshop. There, the finer, detailed parts of the clothing are sewn by employees using individual sewing machines. While Iran does manufacture its own brands of sewing machines, this company has purchased much of its equipment from abroad. The material used here for garment production is a mix of imported fabrics as well as domestically purchased textiles. Auxiliary items such as buttons, zippers, threads and needles are all purchased domestically. Once the clothing is completed, each article is inspected and measured to ensure that they all meet the required sizes and standards. ما داخل مجموعه به صورت مستقیم 300 نفر داخل تولید و فروش نیروی انسانی داریم که سعی کردیم بحث بیمه و امنیت شغلیشون رو به تمام حق و حقوقشون رسیدگی کنیم و در مورد نیروهای تخصصی که آموزش دیدن در این زمینه سعی کردیم که استخدام کنیم و This facility has some 200 employees working directly in manufacturing women's wear. It also has created numerous indirect job opportunities. In 2019, it had around 18 stores spread across the country, and that number is likely higher now with the company's expansion plans. Customers can also shop online for this clothing brand. تو منطقه جغرافیایی هستیم که هاشیه خلیج فارس و بحث کشورهای عربی نکته خیلی خوبیه برای صادرات ما ما در نظر داریم که از قسمت هاشیه خلیج فارس و کشورهای عربی شروع کنیم و محدودیتی برای خودمون نمیبینیم فقط استارتمون رو از این قسمت میخوایم شروع کنیم کشوری مثل آذربایجان و حتی برای ترکیه هم شاید برنامه‌ای داشته باشیم. But this manufacturer has indeed witnessed numerous obstacles over the years. Among them are setbacks from US imposed sanctions which in some ways provided creative opportunities. در مورد تحریم ها من حالا در نظر ندارم که بگم که چون واردات انجام نمیشه محصول وارد نمیشه باعث شده که اتفاق مثبتی بیفته من خودم شخصا دیدگاه هم اینطوریه که اعتقاد دارم که کار به صورت انحصار داخل ایران نباشه من خودم هیچ موقع سمت واردات و بحث محصولی که میتونم داخل ایران با همون کیفیت و قیمت بهای تمام شدهش از خارج کشور بخوام وارد کنم پایین تر تولید کنم در این نهره که من بیام بحث وارد تا انجام بدم ولی مطمئنم که ما داخل کشورمون میتونیم تمام محصولاتمون رو تولید کنیم و تواناییش وجود داره فقط این تحریم ها 
اعتماد به نفس تولید کنندگان رو برد بالا و تونستن که بدون محدودیت واردات بتونن خودشون نشون بدن Also, not too long ago, it was the victim of malicious arson. Its production facilities burned to the ground, luckily without any casualties. One cannot separate the clothing industry from the textile industry because they are so interrelated that one just cannot exist without the other. As long as there is a demand for clothing, there will always be a high demand for textiles and fabrics as well. It makes sense. And with a relatively large domestic market, Iran produces a lot of textiles to meet these demands. The textile industry generates more employment and added value than any other industry. So, we looked at some figures from the Textile and Garment Exporters and Manufacturers Association. We wanted to get more insight on how the textile industry is growing as a whole. Statistics showed there are nearly 8,000 active textile and garment manufacturing units across the country. 22% of the country's entire workforce is employed in these industries, meaning it has provided hundreds of thousands of job opportunities nationwide. In addition, the government issued nearly 2,000 operation licenses, which has added to the country's manufacturing units. That was in the first four months of this year alone, which represented a 16% increase compared to last year. While Iran's textile industry dates back thousands of years, there have been fluctuations in its development over the decades. Certain raw materials, such as polyester, acrylic, and cotton threads, are still imported. In 2019, Iranian textile manufacturers imported nearly 400,000 tons of raw material needed for making textiles. The Customs Administration valued these imports at around $1 billion. Although this amount was relatively less than previous years, the government is keen to boost domestic production of these items. Other natural fibers, however, are abundant in Iran, such as silk, wool, and hemp. It might be interesting to know that the country does produce large amounts of textiles for exports too. Iran sends them off to dozens of countries across the world. Topping the export list is mainly hand-woven carpets and flooring textiles. With this in mind, how is the clothing market doing right now? and what policies have been implemented to increase productions in the garment sector. A few years ago, the government decided to ban the import of clothing and textile products. The goal was to support domestic producers and provide them with an opportunity to improve product quality. Doing so would also help manufacturers become more competitive in global markets. Iran exports garments to countries in Europe as well as Central Asia, Persian Gulf states and the Americas. But its major customers are all neighboring countries sharing land borders with Iran. Supplies from Iran are around 70 to 80 percent of its domestic demand through local productions. That's based on the Weaving and Garment Industries Department of the Ministry of Industry, Mining and Trade. Okay, I believe it is time for me to step aside for several minutes as my good friend and colleague is out there on the field, ready to give you all another exciting report. Take it away, please. Three D printing is one of the most revolutionary technologies of the 21st century, giving everyone from engineers and doctors to DIY enthusiasts and small business owners the ability to transform virtual ideas into physical objects and promises to change life as we know it. These objects were produced by 3D printers, proving that for the printing technology, the world is no longer flat. All 3D printing technologies create solid parts from 3D models, layer by layer, and plastic is the most common material used for producing end-use parts and products. For everything from consumer products to medical devices, since plastic is a versatile category of materials with thousands of polymer options, each with their own specific mechanical properties. 
تقریبا اواخر دهه هشتاد من کمک ناظر یک پروژه دولتی بودم پروژه ساختمانی بود چیزی حدود مثلا 120 تا کارگر داشت این کل پروژه خوابیده بود به خاطر یک قطعه پلاستیکی و ایده ساخت این دستگاه پرینتر سبودی به ذهنم زد توی دنیا دستگاه های مشابه رو نگاه کردیم و به لطف خدا تونستیم بومی سازیش کنیم و صرف تا صد این دستگاه رو داخل ایران بسازیم For any designer and engineer working in product development, it is critical to be familiar with the manufacturing options available today and the new developments that signal how parts will be made tomorrow. So, how are 3D printers made here? مرحله اول طراحی صنعتی این دستگاه است. که به صورت سبودی این دستگاه سفت تا طراحی میشه بعد میره برای لیزر برش آهن سپس جوشکاری آرگون رنگ کوره‌ای و مونتاژ قطعات الکترونیکی و مکانیکی و در انتها کیو سی From professional desktop 3D printers to manufacturing grade large format production ready 3D printers, these industry leading machines have to be built to perfection for this company to stay ahead of the competition. To this end, each of the 73 parts that are needed for the assembly of these printers are manufactured in different cities in Iran. For example, electronic parts are produced in Tabriz and other special mechanical parts are manufactured in Isfahan. But ultimately, they all end up here on the assembly line. مشخصه اصلی فنی دستگاه ما اینه که چه در تیپ‌های خانگی و چه در تیپ‌های نیمه صنعتی و صنعتی دستگاه یک پارچه ورق آهن هیچ قطعه پلاستیکی رو ما در هیچ کدوم از مدل‌های دستگاه‌هامون نداریم این باعث میشه کیفیت قطعه پرینت شده بسیار بسیار بالا میره و هیچ موقع دستگاه خطا نمیده The company's industrial grade printers have all the options of their modern day 3D counterparts. They are very, very user friendly and operate using a beltless mechanical system. By eliminating the rubber belts typically used in the sector and introducing a mechatronic movement system, these 3D printers are aligned with the typical kinematics of industrial machine tools, rising their 3D printing abilities to an international level of accuracy and production speed. از دیگر آپشن های دستگاهمون مخصوصا در مصارف خانگی طراحی بسیار کوچک و کمجا و مصرف برق بسیار پایین این دستگاه است که همچنین در کنار سیستم کاربری بسیار ساده کار کردن با دستگاه رو برای هر شخصی راحت می‌کنه. The knowledge based 3D RD company thinks of its end users every step of the way. offering them a one-year full guarantee with no strings attached, committing themselves to the purchases of their printers by covering the costs of product replacement and services rendered, and gaining their satisfaction along the way. When it comes to users residing in Iran, options increase. By checking the technical expert option box at the time of purchase, printers will be delivered to the user's place of work or home regardless of city or distance. Specialists will take care of installation procedures and provide users with all the necessary information before departure. تمام مشتریان که از ما دستگاه خریداری میکنن اپلیکیشنی بهشون میدیم تحت سیستم عامل های اندروید و آی او اس که با شماره سریال پشت دستگاه و شماره فاکتور رجیستر میشه و داخل اپلیکیشن تمام آموزش ها به صورت تصویری هست جدا از این بانک طرحهای آماده هست که بیش از 350 هزار طرح آماده داریم مثال یک پدری برای بچهش این تسکار رو تحییه میکنه میتونه توی بانک ما مثلا سرچ کنه ماشین خودرو انواع خودروها رو بهش آفر میده و یک دونه رو دانلود میکنه و میده به دستگاه و براش میسازه بدون اینکه علم طراحی داشته باشه به راحتی میتونه قطعات مورد نظرش رو بسازه Maybe many of you have heard at some level about the future potentials of 3D printing, but what do the years to come really hold for this technology in Iran? 
در بحث چشمنداز ها ما دو تا فاز داریم در فاز اول اینه که بتونیم تمام توانمون رو بذاریم دستگاه رو به تمام مردم ایران بشناسونیم و بگیم چه کاربردی داره و در فاز بعدی ما میتونیم متریال پلاستیک رو تغییر بدیم به جای پلاستیک از بتن استفاده کنیم و اتاقک های پیش ساخته بتونی بسازه و همینطور میتونیم از مواد اولیه خوراکی مثل مثلا خمیر گوشت استفاده کنه و همبرگر در هر ترکی رو به مشتری بده و یا از مواد اولیه خمیر کیک استفاده کنه و کیک رو در اشکال مورد نظر به مشتری تحویل بده به طور کلی این چشمنداز رو در بخش آرندیمون داریم که انشالله در سه سال آینده بتونیم خط تولید این دستگاه ها رو با متریال مختلف مثل متریال بتون، متریال پلاستیک، متریال فایبر و غیره بسازیم و به دست مردم برسونیم Whether it's 3D printed houses, the possibility of 3D printing in space, or breakthroughs involving prosthetics, 3D printing is reaching its biggest audience yet, with more printers available now than ever. And we hope that this industry will continue to grow for a very, very long time. Many thanks. What an educational trip indeed. And so, there is a lot more that can be said about the textile and garment industry. So, we have prepared a few interesting bits of news and developments that we hope will further pique your interest. Innovations in fabric production in Iran go beyond the basic function of simply covering a surface. Iranian manufacturers are using know-how from research centers in the field of nanotechnology and plasma technology to make high-tech fabrics. Take this for example. This knowledge helps manufacturers of smart textiles produce EMI shielding fabrics. These are used to make garments that protect people performing maintenance on high voltage lines. Also, companies are using nanotechnology in textile production to make fabric that either is water resistant or soaks up large amounts of liquid. Plasma treatment is used to make hydrophobic textiles. These textiles have many uses for medical purposes such as lab coats, surgical smocks and bandaging. Earlier in the program, we mentioned that Iran still imports textile machinery, but this is due to change. An Iranian company has developed an advanced technology that can boost efficiency on textile machinery. This company produced a laser controller technology that spots broken needles in machinery. The goal is to minimize the degree of waste and damage in machinery. The company has become the world's second firm to develop the state-of-the-art technology after Germany. Its developers say the technology was created entirely with domestic expertise and has a high export potential. This company has defined and implemented many projects for overhauling the textile industry in Iran. Iran's mass production of textiles has come a long way from traditional methods. So, in order to preserve this cultural heritage, a first-of-its-kind traditional textile village has been registered in Iran. Ruin village dates back to the Timurid era and is located in North Khorasan province. The village has around 800 homes. The women are active in traditional textile work with its trade going back around 400 years. The colorful and unique textiles woven here include sheets, towels and material to make shirts. Other related activities include traditional dyeing, spinning and weaving. Around 300 residents are active in this field. The village was also placed on UNESCO's list for originality in traditional textile work. And that covers our program for today. Don't forget to leave us your feedback by visiting our social media. You can also get in touch with us through email with your ideas and thoughts. Take care, everyone. I have been Samson Sees. Sees you in the next bazaar.